Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ati Allah, Ati Rasul Ulil Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself, Ana abdukul ajisu da'if wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence inshaAllah. <coughs> In this holy month of Hajj, we pray that Allah dress us from the immensity of these blessings and forgive our wrongs. These are the day and nights of istighfar and repentance and that whom can fast, inshaAllah they fast tomorrow, Yawmul Arafah in which to expedite the sins of the year before and the year coming and that it's a day of granting one's du'a that whatever people are in truly in need of and want Allah to grant that is the time that in a state of fasting they pray, they do the awrads and wasifas from the Sultanul Awliya if they can and keep asking and asking Allah's forgiveness and Allah to grant an opening. So alhamdulillah these are the, the gifts for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad a continuous source of immense Divine grace and mercy on this nation. When they talk of other nations, oh well, this nation is great, this one is about love, no nothing comes close to the gift that Allah has given to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that in its rewards and in its blessings there are nothing in comparability to it. That at every turn you look Allah is trying to dress and bless the nation of Prophet inshaAllah. Have any questions inshaAllah? As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how do we know the soul is sick? How do we know the soul and body are fighting? How do we know if the soul is sick? This was from the other talk. What was that talk, Shaykh? Remind me. It's in Hajar. It's in Hajar and the Sayyidina Ibrahim battle, inshaAllah. The battle between Islam and Iman and the battle between the the representation of Sitna Hagar which is the soul and the soul having faith and its distress upon the body. That when we, we know the, the soul is sick and the signs of a sickness on the soul is depression and anxiety. That the example of having a ticket for a journey and you bought the ticket, you know that you have a journey ahead <coughs> but for some reason you're just sitting down, you're not packing, <coughs> you're not preparing, well that'll be anxiety. And then come the day of the flight you're not even getting up to go and you begin to cause an immense depression and these are the sort of telltale signs of a difficulty upon the soul when people are extremely anxious and very depressed. So that to relieve anxiety and to relieve depression it's curious through the soul so that the soul doesn't feel that we're not doing anything in preparation for what Allah has given to us because the soul can't lie. Soul was there, so you promised Allah, don't you remember what you promised Allah and the body is completely heedless and probably has partnered with others in making itself to be heedless, as a result very anxious. Because it knows the journey, it knows what its responsibilities, it knows what it promised and knows that we're going to be held accountable for what we promised Allah and the time that we have and what we promised we would achieve 
for Allah And then the depression begins to set in when there's no response from that anxiety because now we're getting later, now it's getting later, that, that ship is sailing. You can see it, it's moving away, the, the anchor is coming off, the, the ropes are, are, are now being untied until the person is completely adrift and they're deep into depression because they know that they're going to be in trouble with Allah So anxiety and depression its cure is alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah. Alhamdulillah hundred times, alhamdulillah that uh, I'm praising you like everything should be praised. I'm praising Allah as if as, as all of Allah is praising, everything in Allah's creation is praising Allah And the barakah of that praise when we sit and meditate, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, Ya Rabbi alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, alhamdulillah that I praise you as you, you des- I, don't, I can't even praise you as you deserve to be praised but I'm praising you like all your creation is praising Ya Rabbi. Wa shukran lillah, shukran lillah that what you have given to me and Allah always teaching that, thank me and I give you more. The shukran lillah Ya Rabbi, shukran lillah, hundred times repeating shukran lillah and then meditating to the barakah of alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah that Allah begin to inspire the body towards what is required by Allah that's why then Allah guides those whom He loves to the turuqs, to the tariqahs <clears throat> so that they can achieve their covenant with Allah achieve what they promised Allah Because if you're just a Muslim sitting there in your couch and listening to me and you have not given bayat, you've completed nothing from what Allah wanted. Your Islam is in danger because how, how can you submit? when you haven't even taken the hand that Allah had asked, inna ladini yubayyunka yubayyunullah that you were supposed to take the hand and the hand of that hand, Allah's hand upon that and we've given talks upon that reality. That that bayar is the first step in acknowledging a path towards Islam, that I'm coming back to my covenant. That's what Islam is about is, what did you promise on Alastu bi Rabbikum muqalu bala? That on the day of promises, what did you promise Allah Well how would you find out what you promised if you don't take the hand? If you don't take the hand of Allah moving through the hand of Muhammadun Rasulullah moving to the hands of Ulul Amri minkum. If we're not even on a hand, how could we possibly come close to what we promised Allah So then our Islam is kind of in doubt there, is this maybe for just tabarak and blessings. But the real path of submission Allah guides and there's no guidance unless Allah guides. That go take the hand of Muhammadun Rasulullah my hand is upon his hand. And the Muhammadan hand is the ulul amri minkum and you'll know them by their love of Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result you take their hand, your hand is on the hand, Prophet hand is on that hand. And if Prophet hand upon that hand, Yadullah, Allah covenant that my hand is upon. Then there's a full authority and connection. Now you're on a path towards Islam because your Islam is to fulfill your covenant with Allah so There's a direction we're going. Islam is not you just come, do whatever you want, you know, buy whatever you want, spend however you want, do whatever you want to do on this earth. Islam was to take us into a direction because we came into the wildness of shaitan's territory, not to be wild with them but was to traverse the satanic territory under the covenant of Allah We're on a mission, not here just roaming and playing. So how can you have a mission if you don't know what the mission is? How could you fulfill a mission when you don't know what your mission is? So it means the hand, as soon as they took the hand, now they're closer to submitting. 
Because then that hand that you took begins to feed you. So don't bite the hand that feeds you because it's going to feed… <laughs> see all these expressions, they're very timely, <laughs> right? You can't bite the hand that feeds you because that hand going to feed you knowledges, guidance so that you can traverse the wildness of myself and shaitan that are partnering onto what does the heavens want from me. Because nobody should be operating from their hawa. Allah has that, have you seen those who make Allah their desire? So they have a version of Allah from their hawa, from their desires. So, oh no Allah says, this is okay for me. Allah says, this is okay for me. And they make everything according to how they want. And that's because the inspirations of shaitan. So how to follow is through the guidance. The shaykh is giving a teaching, there's no force. And you can say, yeah, you know, I was thinking I can do all these, you know, crazy things but it looks like you're saying, oh, we've got to be a little bit more consistent and mellow. So it gives a… it calibrates our life in a direction. And people are free to listen or not listen but it weighs heavy on your consciousness that if you heard them, they burned into your soul. And you willingly try to ignore them is very difficult because you'll keep hearing them in your soul. That don't do that because Prophet promised. His ulur am are reflection of his reality. Allah describes his reality shahidan, mubashiran wa nadiran. The Prophet is witness over you, don't think you're not… Uh, you're, you're operating in a vacuum, nobody sees you. You're like in the Truman's world. There's a movie called, what's Truman's world? Yeah, you're under observation dome and Prophet is watching you. He invite into the room uh, 40 of the grand shaykhs, they're watching you too. And then the ulur am who's responsible for you, he's watching you. So imagine all day long watching, say, oh my goodness, what the heck, what's that guy doing? So we operate under that understanding, they're watching, of course they're watching. As a result, govern yourself accordingly. That's guidance so that the person can submit their will to the will of Allah so that the kingdom of Allah can come into their heart and that what's in heaven will be on earth. Means what the will of Allah within the heavens, Allah wants it onto earth into the heart of the servant, that follow my command, follow my will. And then the shaykh becomes that which calibrates and guides the servant back to the will of Allah which then becomes the will of Prophet and manifesting through the ulul amr. So it becomes the first step, without that there's… it becomes a… you can imagine under the hands of shaitan with no shaykh you're, you're all over the place, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Say so, thank you so much for that soba on the lordly human beings and how they are attached to a regulator. <coughs> Say the how to remove that regulator. InshaAllah. That was a good one. What did we talk about? <clears throat> that was a talk on the energy that the Allah now inspiring scientists to begin to understand about malakut where Muslims don't want to talk about malakut. They want to let's talk about salah. But the energy is the great denominator that makes us all equal. The dogma of the rules can't be understood lost in translation. So now we come to what equalizes all of us is energy. They said 1.4 volts per cell in the body and 70 trillion cells. So that becomes almost 90 trillion or 86 trillion volts of energy. So scientists are baffled that how do we have 80 trillion volts of energy? and we're not able to use it, what's going on? We said if we had used it then Allah would have made this earth like a superhero movie. 
that everybody coming from the land of the heavens, high voltage, high powerful souls and then like those superhero movies that you use like your mental capacity, you begin to move the thing, you begin to warp all the metal, you begin to fight and throw somebody across the earth. You'd be using all this immense power like gods upon this earth because this dimension doesn't have that but Allah didn't want that. So you're very powerful creation, وَلَكَرْ كَرَامْنَ بَنِي adam. And this, this love that Allah has for us made us to be immensely powerful. If they're figuring that voltage out, the soul's voltage is infinite capacity because it takes directly from Divine Oceans. And as a result of that power Allah describe, I have attached the shaitan to everyone. The shaitan is a regulator. The shaitan is attached to people to make sure that their voltage drops all the way down to nothing. The kid has it for a few weeks until the parents begin to deal with them, feed them and then you can see their voltage and the energy of the child is dropping. The character, yeah, see. <laughs> They say by two and they say terrible two, the regulator is in full force that that shaitan is influencing the character of the child, the, the, the demeanor of the child to take away the energy. So our life was about how to destroy that regulator. And that's why Prophet came with the most perfected system. That that regulator is going to continuously try to take you down, what they call sins. You'll do something wrong and then Allah rigged the game for us that that wrong will count as one. As soon as you do something good, it's counted as ten. As a result of ten, you're always ahead nine. So you do something bad, then Allah teaching, go do something good so that you're up nine and that one that came down. So then our life was continuously making a system in which to counter what shaitan is doing. Then Prophet gave to us sadaqah that on a daily basis if you give sadaqah you begin to counter the negative pull the shaitan is doing. So when you're muhasaba in accounting and say, every time I did something wrong today, maybe I did five things wrong that I know, let's say it's ten things, I'm down ten. One hasanat took me up ten but I'm then the same as I was yesterday, I, that day was wasted for me. But I can do two more good deeds and that's now thirty hasanat, so then I'm up. So it means our life was about understanding the shaitan is pushing it down and pushing the energy down and our life was to bring the energy level back up. If we can consistently operate on bringing the energy up by doing good deeds on a daily basis and then making your meditation that, am I still ahead because it's an accounting practice. You know how much shaitan is playing with you that day. And if you know that system that he's going to attack you five times, six times, ten times that day, well then you know you're going to do your sadaqah and good deeds and hasanat. And those hasanats reward you in ten. So then those servants whom they have vigilance over themselves and they're good with their accounting, their days are always up higher, up higher, up higher, up higher. And then what happens now? If all your good deeds are not being wiped out by the regulator, you're becoming more and more powerful. More and more powerful until Allah finds that your positive charge is very high. And what Allah gave then in Qur'an is that shaitan is not attached to his mukhlas. Allah grants the servant to be mukhlas means that the regulator has been taken off. And that whatever shaitan does to them, Allah is countering it by forgiving them, inspiring them, go do some more good because they know the system. They don't let the system to run into negative and stay negative. They know if they did something inappropriate or not pleasing to Allah they counter it with their good deeds. And as a result of the mukhlas, 
He told shaitan, you can't come after them, means the regulator is taken off, those servants are operating in a very positive and powerful charge. Then the scientists with that understanding they understood, 70 trillion volts of energy. What do you think somebody who has 70 trillion volts of energy is capable of doing? Yep, that becomes now the story of awliya. That with their energy and their soul they can reach anywhere. If Allah give them a vision they can see anything because they're operating at a very powerful level of their soul's energy. They can cast their soul through anything. Their energy can go after all negative energies and that's why in their presence many feet, many people find a sense of peace because their soul are burning all the shaitans from allowing them to even come near. And anywhere that you have their talks, their voice and their images becomes a maqam for them. Means that when you put the sound into your home, when you put the images into your home, that home becomes a maqam and a station for that shaykh in which their energy is emanating from that location. So that same energy that reaching is eternally reaching and it never goes off because we're operating from the soul. We're not talking about a physical. Even if the physical body is asleep that soul is Hayyu al Qayyum and that becomes a power that continuously emanating out and as a result that becomes a tremendous source of cleansing and protection. And that energy what Allah is describing says, Ayatul Kareem all describe these realities, ittaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Have a consciousness, means you'd have to be meditating to think that you know it's not all about you but Allah has given something to sadiq, to truthful servants whom are truthful in their deeds and their actions. What do you think Allah gave to them? Cash? No, He gave them from eternity. What Allah gives from eternity? Real estate in heaven? It's not like here, you don't need real estate in heaven. You need energy. Only currency in the heavens is qudra, you got it or you want it. It's not like here, here everything is cash, you want money, you, you want to get means, you want to buy something. The only currency in heavens is what they call what? Power. Why? Because knowledge is power. The more qudra and the more energy that been given to that soul, what becomes its manifestation? Knowledge. So when there's an abundance of knowledge flowing from a servant it means they are fuluqul mashhoon from Surah Yasin because this is all related to the Divinely heart emanating from the heart of Prophet That Allah said, we created fuluqul mashkhoon wa hamanna mithlihim and we created smaller versions of those big loaded ships. Loaded with what? With an immense amount of energy. As a result of that energy then Allah send them around for cleansing, for revitalizing, for everything that's necessary because we're an energy being. So I mean when the current is, is down you just merely look at them, listen to them, keep the company of them whether it's physical or through the internet. Space and time is not any relevance and no barrier. The minute you listen to a, a YouTube or a video that sound and that image is coming live from their soul because these are the oceans of an hayat and they can't be trapped in time. So it's not an energy that expired, as soon as you turn it on that energy comes fresh with its power out to the servant. As a result they muhi al qulub, they begin to revive the hearts of servant all because this is a reflection of the Muhammadan reality. Mahiyya dunub wa muhi al qulub. The one whom crushes the bad and revives the heart. We just described the energy. If an abundance of positive energy is sent out, what does it do to your negative account? 
it immediately boosts up your charge like video games or like your Tesla. Your charge goes down, you go into their presence, listen, do your good deeds, what happens? The charge of your battery is immediately brought up. Mahidunub, they, they're crushing all of the things that brought the servant down. But at the same energy that's coming is muhi al qulub that it revives the heart because the heart's food is the eternal oceans of power. And that heart, you know, you're like a Tesla, you need a charging station. Pretty soon they won't even give you a combustible engine anymore. That's why the price of gas is $9 a gallon. They don't want you driving engines anymore. So pretty soon you'll have, everybody will have an electric car. Well once you have an electric car, what Allah wants to teach you from that? That you're an electric car but you just don't understand to plug in. <coughs> but that was a big hack. Big hack. <laughs> if a small hachu was hack, imagine what that was, <laughs> right? Imagine your whole life is this car and you have to keep looking for charging stations. So what's a charging station? It's a place in which I can get an abundance of power. So it means that every video I watch from them, every association I attend with them is my charging station. And when I watch it, my soul is being charged and as a result now I'm, I'm full. But if my reserve goes down and it goes so far down and I don't charge it, what happens? You get locked right in place. There's not even a secondary engine or gas or any other way of moving that vehicle, it just locks. And that's what happens with depression and anxiety. The person becomes so locked with no energy that everything just becomes down. So the shaykh's responsibility is then the casting of energy, is to send energy out from their soul. Not in their hands, it's in Allah that when Allah make fulaqul mashhoon that their souls are lit with energy. As a result anything near it, around it, viewing it will be dressed from that positive energy and that blessings that comes from Ati Allah. Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah <coughs> When, if granted one of your names during tafakkur, will it be told by your guide and his voice? It, it can be but his voice may not be understood to many people and it could be an inspiration from your own voice that been pushed by the guidance into your soul. Means that to hear your voice with an ocean of clarity there's no distinction. That when you hear yourself and you hear it with a yaqeen it's as if the shaykh is speaking to you, there's, there's no difference because it's not a voice. It's a mannerism and an understanding of how that energy is coming. So that, that's something different. So when they connect and they connect with that energy, there is no sound. So they're hearing a voice like an inspiration that comes into their heart. And then they write it, they contemplate about it and they keep asking and they keep asking, they keep asking until it becomes more and more clear. Because many people have an have a imagination too, where well, they sit down and, my, my name is King Arthur, I was King Arthur, I'm <laughs> Shaykh, I'm King Arthur, I'm Jesus, I'm Jesus, the most imitated person. It's what they call anti-Christ, hello, because too many Christs are coming onto the earth, everyone thinks they're Jesus because he's going to be the most imitated individual. We don't have antichrist, we have dajjal means we have deceit. So that's why those personalities are, are named like that. But yes some people can think that they're King Richard but that's not it. It's whatever inspiration is coming is of a name, that these names are coming and these are names that would bring you closer to your Divine Reality and that inspire you towards your character and what Allah has dressed upon your soul. And then you keep it, write it and then keep contemplating until more and more confirmation can come, inshaAllah.
Uh, assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, you mentioned the third paradise in regards to our names is for fighting and struggling. What are the other paradises? Yeah, we can only go to that right now, inshaAllah. <laughs> we'll try to get to that one day soon, inshaAllah. Subhanahu wa bika rabbil izzati amma yathifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ila sharaf al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyyatul aliyya wa sayyidah wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha.